We can marry him all. So then he becomes a little more than a stud. And then the Torah provides, which would be a natural occurrence, that the slave would say, Oh, I'll see, I see, she. I, I love my wife. I don't want to be separated from her and my children. And I have a fine master. And I want to say, Wait. Like, so then the Torah provides that he stays away, like he becomes an Ebed Nirza. But even an Ebed Nirza goes out in the yoga. Not a permanent servitude. And if we look in the Chazal, we see that the, the, the entire structure of Jewish society was against slavery. They made it economically uh, a situation that was not really viable. There's only one state left to eat for supper, the slave eats it, not the master. And only one pillow, the slave. That's why Chazal said, Me Shekona Evan Lat Smoke Konoda Lat. By acquiring the servant, you really acquire a master. We have uh, indications in our own life, right? Uh, you have uh, someone that comes to clean the house, so you're a prisoner to that person. You have to make all the arrangements for that person. So uh, the uh, at the time of indenture was also limited. Maximum was six years. The seventh year he went out free. But again, it's in the middle of uh, uh, Shmita occurred or uh, Yoga occurred, so then he goes out free. So it was a, not a very permanent situation unless the servant himself made it, so to speak, a semi permanent situation. And even then, the uh, Chaval pointed out that doing so was wrong. Because Abadai hates the law of Odi, and that's why they pierced his ear in order to show the displeasure of what he did. So all of that uh, softens the idea, but it doesn't change it. it doesn't answer it. Why did the Torah come out and say, you should never have a slave? Slavery is uh, inherently evil. So uh, we're looking at it in 21st century eyes uh, without uh, having the view that existed for thousands of years that slavery was part of society. And the things that was part of society have to be regulated. And that even today in many parts of the world it exists. Of course, you say uh, that this is part of the idea of what people are so well connected to our raw. We have a few parshas in the Torah like this. That's the parsha of the Apostle. <coughs> Man sees a woman in the war, and he uh, he assaults her because uh, more inhibitions are uh, not present. The Torah defines what happens. He has to take her home, he has all sorts of things, and he has to keep her forever, etc. etc. Uh, the Torah is not in favor of uh, the one to the soul of women. But will he be so ever can I get the Torah? The Torah dealt with the reality of human nature. So when 
there are many, many things in the Torah that we could say the Torah says don't do it. And that would be enough. But the reality is that saying don't do it doesn't do it at all. It doesn't speak against the natural instincts and behavior of human beings. And therefore, the Torah attempted to regulate the behavior without making a demand to abolish it completely. That's a very sophisticated idea. It's especially uh, people who want to know black and white. Are you for it? Are you against it? You should abolish it. You see the uh, attempt in the uh, Society to abolish discrimination and pass laws. You do everything. But the most that you can do is regulate it. You can't abolish it. Because somehow it's built into the human psyche, built into the human behavior, becomes part of us. So it morphs into different, uh, into different forms. Uh, slavery uh, was defined uh, differently in many different generations. People who have to work uh, 14 hours a day in the sweatshop for uh, minimum wages, so they felt that they were slaves. And uh, to a certain extent, we all have a feeling of slavery because of the discipline involved in whatever we do in life. So in that line, the Torah talks here also the negatives are uh, the Torah tells you don't have slaves. It's not economically viable. It's not socially acceptable. At the end, it's even weeds the immorality. Slavery brings has gayness, it brings uh, a lack of discipline. Don't do it. But the Torah realizes that, that don't do it is uh, enough to make it so that it doesn't exist. And therefore, it tends to regulate. And in that regulation, that's it for Kabbalah. Those are the halachas that are involved. And what the relationship between the master and the slave should be. And the Torah made no provision whatsoever to have a female slave. You could have an homo or a but she's basically a child who you're stuck responsible to raise until she reaches the age of puberty and then she goes out free. And not only that, in Shloshayla Loyasela, it was intended that the master or his family would marry her, would bring her into the family. So again, it's an attempt to regulate. But uh, the bold statement to abolish it, well, that seems to, seem to be against the way human beings deal. And that certainly was against thousands of years of uh, so called civilization. And as I mentioned, it exists in many parts of the world as well today. And uh, we are witness to all of the problems that it causes, residual problems, even centuries later. So the Torah opposes it. And it regulates it. And not everything that the Torah opposes 
that would feel that human society will abolish. And therefore, there has to be rules. There has to be some sort of regulatory system that would somehow uh, allow the uh, parties to exist uh, without uh, going to extremes, uh, without going to extremes of cruelty and of dominance of one over the other. So uh, there really is uh, no satisfactory answer. We were writing the Torah, we were uh, not writing this part. And not even that, that's the part that leads off the Shvati. But we did not the Torah. And uh, because of that, therefore, and we have to give it a consideration that otherwise it <coughs> needs to be rejected and uh, to understand that the Torah came to regulate it, and that's part of the halacha, that's part of life. And nevertheless, to take the recommendations of the Torah not to get involved with it whatsoever. I'm going to